my turning point guest today was told that he'd never walk again. Not only can he walk, he cycles, he swims, he's world champion in the disabled triathlon. He's Steve Judge from Eckington. He's joined me in the studio this morning. It's a good story. It's a cheerful story, this, and it's an anniversary story. Steve Judge, what happened to you on the 26th of April, 10 years ago? Hi. Um, on the 26th of April, 10 years ago, I had a car accident which resulted in both my legs being crushed in the car. Um, it took an hour to get me out of the car and into the hospital, Northern General Hospital, where they first of all saved my life and then um, attempted to save my legs. And when I came to, um, they had done uh, my left left leg, they'd fixed up temporarily, and my right leg, they'd put a, a fixator, it's called, around it, which is like a cage, holding it all together. But I'd lost four inches of bone in my right leg and uh, lack of feeling or nerve damage in my left leg and my knee had been shattered and I was told that I'd never walk again. Well, no, I may never walk again. So um, from that, I, um, I progressed and I got my knee fixed. I didn't get my feeling back in my left leg, but my right leg, once it was fixed, I then had to stretch it out to the right length, which was four inches. So I had to turn bolts every day to, to get it a millimetre a day to the right and then I had to straighten my leg which is another cage I had to do months and if not years of physio day after day um thought of that I I lost my job in the process because I couldn't work I was in a wheelchair for about six months to a year after that I was on crutches had to learn to walk again uh from two crutches down to one crutch and eventually to no crutches I eventually got my fixator off which meant that my my bone had grown back and my leg was the right length and I could stand again I could learn to walk again which is very very scary um, just walking around the house just with my hand on the wall at times was was okay but going out into the outside world was very scary uh, swimming was okay once I got into the swimming pool I felt quite free to be honest it was nice um, from there I eventually learned to get back on my bike again and that was good because I could venture out a bit a bit of freedom get some fresh air and that was it for a long time until about three and a half years ago um, I wanted another challenge and I'd always set myself goals and challenges every step of the way whether it was to learn to stand again or learn to cycle again um, my next challenge in 2009 was to do a triathlon which obviously involves swimming, cycling and running. Now the running bit, I thought I could just walk, but I would just get round. That was my goal, was just to finish the triathlon. So I looked locally, I found Rother Valley had a triathlon and they had this thing called a para triathlon, which is a uh, uh, triathlon for disabled people. So I registered myself, uh, found out if I was disabled or what classification I would be disabled in, and I was a, a tri three category. I competed, and this is uh, the one at Rother Valley was the British Championships. Mm -hmm. So, my training got quite exciting, really, as I realised that uh, I'd be competing in the British Championships in power triathlon. I did the triathlon, I did very well, and I won my category. So, I finished as British champion in the tri three category. So, that was just amazing, and that was my goal completed. I'd done a triathlon and finished it. But everybody at the triathlon said I'd done really well and they're really encouraging and they said, you've got to do more, there's more to it. This is a new sport, you know, we've only just started, do a few more. So I said, yeah, OK, this, this sounds good fun. And I, I loved it, it was a really good buzz. The running was going OK, it was very, very painful to think that I hadn't run for seven or eight years. Um, it, for me, it feels a bit like a miracle, but it was just amazing how I could put them all together, the swim, the run, the bike, and I did another triathlon, Olympic distance, and I won that in my category, and I did the third one in London, and I won that in my category. So I won all three in the first year, finished British champion, and uh, an, an amazing year, 2009. Great story. Steve Judge is my guest of the day. I say today, or, or this last month, the last few weeks, have been the 10th anniversary of the road accident that totally changed his life. It's also the 10th anniversary of this year of something else, but we'll come on to that in just a moment. I'm in the company at the moment of Steve Judge, uh, who has told us an extraordinary story about... I'm laughing, it wasn't... One wouldn't laugh at the near-fatal car accident in 2002, 10 years ago, uh, and he's now in the studio... 
He's 38 years old, he's in the studio, and something else happened this year, 10 years ago, which he'll tell us about in a moment. I want to go back, however, and make you relive the pain of what you were describing, the only time you stopped smiling as we were talking in that first bit, uh, when you had to do something in the way of winding your leg as it got bigger and bigger, so that the lengths got right. Would you go back to that, Mark? Yeah, sure. Um, there, there were two stages. Let's go for the first one, uh, where it's just the leg lengthening. So my leg was four inches short, so um, I had to, they, the hospital broke my leg and then with the external fixator around it like a cage, I slowly had to twist the bolts a millimetre a day to lengthen my leg. Um, Did so that hurt? Um, not too much. The pain wasn't in the, the lengthening it, on the twisting of the bolts. The pain was when I had to then stand on my leg. Now I had to stand on my leg because if you don't use it, you lose it and you've got to build your bone up. The only way you can build your bone up and make it strong is by putting weight through it. So after I'd lengthened my leg bit by bit, and if you think about an x-ray, the, the bone, there's a break in the bone and there is a gap. On an x-ray there's a gap, there's just blackness where there is no bone. Uh, the cage oh. is holding it together. You then have to put your faith in this cage and stand on your leg to put the weight through it. By doing that, it will encourage the bone to grow and the x-rays will show calcium growing between the two bits of bone, like an egg timer, <sighs> bit by bit. And this is over um, a year basis. So uh, at one point there was a, almost a four-inch gap of, of blackness, maybe grey at that stage, um, where there was no bone. But through the process of standing on my leg and putting weight through it and walking if I could... This, this gap got whiter and whiter and whiter as the calcium grew and my new bone w was, was formed and uh, eventually it got to the stage where this cage could be removed. Now, much as I hated this cage because of all the pain and discomfort that I had and, uh, and, and the bleeding and all of that, eventually when they said it's time to take it off, I asked the question, are you sure? Because mm. I didn't really want this cage to come off because that meant I had to rely on the bone. They said yes. They took the bone, well, what they do is they, they loosen the cage off first, so you're kind of walking around with this cage on, which isn't doing an awful lot, um, apart from clanking around, and then after a week, you go in again, and they, they take it off. Now, to describe the cage, it's very difficult, but it was based on the bicycle wheel uh, over in Russia in the 1960s. So if you imagine, let's say, five little bicycle wheels around your leg, and the spokes go through your leg... No through your leg and out the other end so just little spokes all the way down oh. so you've got five ca five rings um to take the cage off they loosen all the bolts they use pliers literally pliers they snip the spokes and then they grab the other end of the spoke and whip it out and uh, i was quite surprised that they didn't give me any gas and air to do yeah. this there was no operation i was fully conscious and at one point the um the, the nurse that was doing it was struggling with one, and uh, so I even assisted oh, to pull wow. one of these. It's like something out of oh, a film, wow. yeah. And then, what, and then you stood on it for yeah. the first time. Yeah, then, then they put a... Thankfully, they put a little plaster cast around it, just give me a bit of confidence, and then I finally stood on my bone for the first time fully, uh, and uh, it was great. Didn't and it hurt? It didn't hurt. <laughs> no, no, I'd been through all the pain by then, so that was OK, but... Through this process and stretching my leg, my tendons were all really tight. My, f my foot, if you can imagine, was all clawed. Uh, my toes were clawed. I couldn't straighten my knee. Now, this is really, really important because if you're trying to put weight through your leg and your knee is bent, your knee will collapse and you will not be able to put full weight through it. So the next bit was physio. I needed to do a lot of physio on my, on my knee to get it straight. I tried that for three months, loads of pain, loads of anger, trying to get it sorted, couldn't do it. So they, this was before the cage came off, to be honest. What they did is they put another cage on my, my top half, on my thigh, and I used to do these other bolts, which slowly straightened my leg more and more, which meant that I couldn't move my leg. It was just like a, a long, straight cage all the way down. Now, this is the most excruciating pain because you're stretching tendons uh, and uh, sleeping at night with a, a, a cage on your leg is very, very uncomfortable, no matter how many pillows you put there. Uh, seven weeks of pain, I went through that, but I knew every step of the, the way, I knew how important it was. If I was going to progress and stand properly and walk properly, I had to get my leg straight. Steve Judge is telling the story of what happened to him as a consequence of a motor accident in 2002. Local man, uh, and uh, celebrating two anniversaries, more than two actually, but the anniversary of the motor accident and something else that happened a little later in the year. Steve, do you live with pain constantly now? Yes, yeah, every, every time I walk around and, and step... I have pain, especially in my right foot. Sometimes it's worse than other times. 
Um, if I've been doing sport, if I've been doing running, then it hurts even more. So do you? I mean, do you, do you measure? Do you weigh those two things up? The pleasure of doing the sport and the pain that comes thereafter, which for for many people who do sport, it can hurt a bit. But yeah, for yeah. you, it really hurts. Yeah, yeah um, very much so. It's it's very much a pleasure and pain. Uh, capacity so I get a lot of pleasure from running especially because it was taken away from me uh, for seven or eight years and to get that back is just amazing when I go running I look down at my feet as they're hidden the floor and I smile to myself it is just incredible so I've got that back I love running I love doing triathlon the pain does come sometimes when I'm running not too much because you've got the adrenaline going so that's good but when you stop especially the day after my my ankle is very very painful because it doesn't move very much at all so when you're running you're forcing it to move so the next day a lot of pain maybe the day after a lot of pain I always weigh that up with how much pleasure I get now, I've just explained how much pleasure I get from running so at the moment the pleasure is still uh, winning and the pain mm. is much as it's difficult I can deal with it um, um, but it is it is hard work. Well, you, you, there'll come a point when you won't be able to, and, and we'll. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm fit, I'm healthy. I can I can put up with the pain. As time goes on, I might not be able to deal with it. Vice versa, the, the might the pain might get worse, and the pleasure might not be so much. Uh, then at that point, I might have to choose a different sport or just do the swimming and the the cycling bit and leave the running alone. You told us uh, that you, the, the accident ten years ago cost you a lot of things, including your job. Are you working these days? I'm working these days in Sheffield. It's a Sheffield company called Barlow's, and they're based on London Road. It's a construction company, project management. So I do health and safety and environmental there. It's office based, my job, but I do go on to construction sites as well. So moving about them. Um, I have to think about what I'm doing, especially if the, the site is under construction, you've got slips, trips and falls, mm. and I have to be careful where I'm putting my feet, because much as I'm fairly stable, there's, there's times when I'm not so stable. And if the staircase is not fully completed, I have to be careful. Down you go. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I do work locally, and, and that's really good. Really Steve, good it's lovely. I said there are two universes. The other one is going to bring people to tears if they've not already gone that way, as they've imagined their legs being stretched like yours were. Uh, you had the accident in April of this year, 10 years ago. What happened to you later in the year? Well... In April uh, in 2002, we were already making plans because me and my girlfriend there, my fiance Ruth, we were going to get married in August later on in 2002. So people asked us after the accident when I was in hospital or when I was in the wheelchair, uh, are you going to put your wedding back? And my first response was, no way, absolutely not. We what was Ruth's response? Uh, hers it weren't much of a bargain at that stage. No, <laughs> hers luckily was the same response. She was fantastic while I was in the hospital. She looked after me. She worked really hard to get me out of the hospital as soon as possible. Uh, anybody who's been in the hospital for a long time, the one thing they want to do is get better and get out. But with Ruth's help, I was able to come out after four and a half weeks because she cared for me at home. So, um, through sickness and health, um, even though we weren't married, she you looked after with me. The yeah, yeah, we, we kind of like uh, put, put it to the test. And came, come August, August the 3rd in 2002, we got married in Eckington Church uh, to the delight of all our friends and family. And it was really nice. It was very special. I was still in a wheelchair, but my first goal was to stand again. And I had a, a, a deadline for this. I really wanted to stand again for the first time at the front of the, of the church so that I could get married to Ruth. So, so, go for that moment. Make us all wince. Had you done it already? Had you, had you rehearsed that, or was this...? Physio um, involves doing it every day or three times a day, and some people don't realise that. So I was doing standing up on the Zimmer frame every single day, but how long I could stand up for was debatable, and I wanted to stand up for a long time at the front of the church, not stand up and sit down. So we came up with a cunning plan. Much as I could stand up just about on the Zimmer frame, we, got, we bought a shooting stick, which is a, a, a stick with a little seat on the top, which you can put under your bottom, and you can you sit on cheat. that. And you, you are standing up, supposedly, <laughs> but you're kind of sat down as well. So I stood up using the Zimmer frame, put the weight through both my legs, and then lowered myself onto the shooting stick. And there I was at the front of the church, stood up, with the sunlight coming through the windows. In agony. In agony. <laughs> but not too much because of the shooting stick. I, the pain was not going through my legs. So I was smiling 
and we we went through the service and uh, there was many a tearful eye from friends and family who, who couldn't believe it because the last they'd heard I was, I was in a wheelchair they'd seen me in a wheelchair and suddenly at the front of the church they saw me rise up and stand I wish I'd been there Steve thanks so much for coming and telling your, your story it's been absolutely great do me one more favor uh, give me the favorite sound the one that makes you most happy uh, at the moment it's uh, hearing my bedroom door handle turn so, uh, my daughter Susanna she's four and at the moment she's getting up early and she comes into bed and I know that I'm going to get a nice big cuddle from her as that opens and, and so that sound of the door handle opening Steve Judge thanks very much indeed